Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we're up here in production because I am going to share with you uh, the annuals that I am going to use in my garden this year. This is my 2024 annual plant list for both the gardens at our house and for all the gardens here at the nursery. We all love talking about plants, right? So let's share some ideas with one another and I am going to share with you, um, maybe not every single one of them because there's, there's a lot. I'm going to try and then kind of give you an idea of the uses that I'm going to have them in the garden for and then why maybe I picked that particular plant or that variety or that cultivar, whatever the case may be. Now, before we get into it, I have two kind of exciting uh, announcements. One, the Creekside sweatshirts are on sale. So if you use this code right here, go to the website gardeningwithcreekside.com put a sweatshirt in your cart, right? So these are uh, great sweatshirts. They only come in black. We're just keeping it simple, people. It's in black. These are from um, League, the brand League, and they are great, high quality. All of our staff has them and wears them. On the front, you just have the Creekside logo. And then on the back is the barn and the gardening with Creekside. So. Those are available, put the code in, but y'all don't check out. Do not check out without putting in the code. You're gonna get 25% off all the sweatshirts. It is while supplies last because we are kind of starting to leave winter behind and we're going into spring. These are great for days exactly like this. In the morning, it is quite cool. So we all have on our sweatshirts, have a t-shirt on underneath, when we get nice and toasty in here in the greenhouse, because it's going to happen, we can shed the sweatshirt and layers is key right now. So 25% off all of the Creekside sweatshirts, right? While supplies last and then when they're out, they're out and we'll probably restock, you know, like this fall. Next, head over to the website. If you have not yet signed up for our email list, go ahead and sign up for that. I will have a link here that you can click on the link, go to the video description, you can click on the link or just go to the website and there's multiple areas where you can sign up for our emails. This is the best way for us to communicate with you about um, upcoming specials. And there is going to be a special that runs this weekend that you are going to want to take advantage of. The email is going to go out on Friday. So I will tell you, we're gonna have a great special on plants on the website email goes out on friday so sign up for the emails so that way on friday morning you will get that email and you will know exactly what that plant special is for the limited amount of time so there you go now let's get into talking about plants we are standing here obviously in the production greenhouse right and um we've talked about this before because we've been here several times before but you knew that we had over the 21,000 plants that arrived. We had e-commerce, we had retail, and then we had the plants for the gardens. My sweet people are working so nicely for me and we are going to be getting these plants for the gardens potted up. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to share with you the exact varieties that we will be using in the gardens. So you will see them back there. We're gonna run through these plants so that we can then get these plants potted up and get them growing. So I'm gonna go through them and share what I am picking for my gardens. Huge fan of Color Blaze Coleus. It is no uh, secret how much I absolutely love Coleus. It is an amazing foliage plant. You're not gonna get it for the flowers. So this year I have chosen um, three different <laughs> three different colors um, and it is hard for me to choose because I love them all. Uh, this year I am going back with one that I have not used in a while, Color Blaze Golden Dreams. I love the Golden Dreams because of the color, right? I was looking back at old pictures from the cottage garden and I had put in a couple of Golden Dreams here and there. It is just so bright with that chartreuse edging it's got kind of a burgundy deeper color um, in the center and some veining on it. It is gorgeous. And because the color Blaze Coleus does sun or shade, it is extremely adaptable. You know my garden, the vast majorities of my garden are full sun. So where I'm gonna be using these are full sun. Can you use them in your shade garden, your part sun, half sun, half shade? 
Absolutely. You may notice a little bit of a color difference between if you had the exact same plant in full sun and full shade. There could be a little difference, but they will thrive there. So we're doing Golden Dreams. Then we are doing the Newly Noir. Love this one. It is almost like that rich is so dark purple it is almost a black really rich purple uh, beautiful wine color right and then it pairs gorgeous with lime thyme i think i will probably always have lime thyme in the garden because it is a solid chartreuse color right so whether you pair it with golden dreams wicked witch is one of my favorite ones to pair it with the newly noir right so you've got all of these different options all three of these are gonna get some height to them. Because of our growing season is so long, by the end of the season, they could easily be three feet in the landscape. I personally use my coleus in the landscape because it gets so big and I like having that big presence. So I will use it towards the back of the garden and then I will put smaller things in front of it. So for my golden dreams, I know that some of that will end up in the cottage garden, the newly noir and the lime thyme. Those are gonna end up in some of the entrance beds. So lots of fun there. <clears throat> Next, you may not think of this as a plant for the landscape, but I'm gonna challenge you, a nasal basil. Now, a nasal basil is a culinary basil. It has those huge, it's like a Genovese type basil. So massive leaves on it, classic basil scent, right? Even now as a little liner, it has that great basil scent to it, that fragrance that just screams summertime. But when you put it in the landscape and or a pot, it works similarly to like what a coleus would, right? It gets really a nice size in the garden you will get this beautiful um, rich green semi-glossy right because basil has a little i think it has a little bit of a gloss to it leaf to it and then i can i can easily go and i can pinch on it i can make my pesto that's what i love the basil for is for making pesto and the more you kind of pinch on it the bushier and the thicker it gets for me with my long growing season it gets massive i mean I have a picture of Christine and I, uh, two or three years ago, we were pulling out a basil from the landscape in the fall. We had on coats. It was huge. I am gonna comp like, um, do companion plantings with petunias and my euphorbias. So it's one of those like those cottage gardens where you're using it for you know, the attractive foliage, but you're also using it because it is practical and you can eat it. It is delicious. So, basil basil is going to be going in the landscape as a landscape plant, but that I can also uh, go and pinch and make some pesto off of it. I could not, not have super bean of pink cashmere in the gardens, right? These will be uh, displayed predominantly at the, in the signature garden. I am going to do a mixed planting um, along those raised beds where the wall is. So the super bean of pink cashmere is going to go in there and mix. I am going to use it um, as individual plants. I am not going to do a mass planting of it. I kind of have a, a, a vision of using some of these other plants that I'm going to share with you mixing in there. But the pink cashmere, of course, is the brand new one available this year. Really nice, soft pink. And then in the landscape, of course, it acts a little bit more like a ground cover as, as far as it goes out. It's only going to get like 6 to 12 inches tall. So when I'm using it in the landscape, it will spread out. Now, if I plant it right up against the wall, it will um, go there and then spread over the wall. Of course, in hay racks and hanging baskets, it is a beautiful trailer. You want to talk about huge, beautiful flower heads on this thing? Pink cashmere. So, of course, I have to have it. One of my all-time favorites. I love this plant. I loved it from the very first time we trialed it. Suncredible yellow sunflower. We are huge fans of these plants because these are non-stop bloomers that put on massive amounts of flowers all season long. The more you cut those flowers, the more they produce. So they make great cut flowers. I've talked about this before. If you have kids, grandkids, whoever, or you're just like me and you like bringing uh, your fresh flowers from the out of your garden into your home, 
great cut flowers. The more you cut on the plant, the thicker, tighter, and more prolific it is when it blooms. We're gonna do a mass planting of the Suncredible Yellow Sunflower on the house side of the berm. If you remember last year, we did all of the petunias. So we have three holy grails, three summerific holy grails in the back against the fence. We're gonna come in front of those and put the Suncredible Yellow Sunflowers in front of those, that deep, rich color of the foliage from Holy Grail with those red flowers. Then you have the sunflowers in front of it. It is going to be spectacular. It's a great way to attract your pollinators to your garden as well. Then this is going to be one of those plants that we add in to those mixed plantings there um, on the raised bed. We're going to do the Mystic Illusion Dahlia. This Dahlia is so much fun because it is going to be about 18 to 36 inches tall so it's going to get some good height to it but it has really dark dark foliage I'm talking about like holy grail has that really dark dark foliage kind of think of that but in a dahlia obviously a much smaller leaf on it and then with mystic illusion you get the bright yellow cheery flowers on it it is a beautiful complementary color to it we love going to um blowing rock north carolina that is a just a cutest little town up in the mountains of North Carolina, about an hour and a half away from us. The city does an amazing job landscaping and every year they have Mystic Illusion in their beds and it is always so beautiful. And I tell Jerry every year, I'm like, oh, we need to put this in the garden. Oh, we need to put this in the garden. This year we're putting it in the garden. It will be in that mixed border along with the pink cashmere. Next, all right, cool weather. You know that we have a big event coming up in May. We are hosting, we're gonna be the uh, site for Alyssa's wedding. Alyssa is one of our employees. She's like our third daughter, she's, she's back there. Um, and so she is getting married at the end of May. So the wedding will be, um, the ceremony itself will be in the signature garden. Then the reception is gonna be at the house. We have to have it looking great and then of course, we have the signature event uh, experience coming in June. So I need to have some plants that will be thriving and full for the wedding. I'm gonna do the Campfire Marshmallow. I did Campfire Marshmallow last year. This is a new Biden. If you're not familiar with Bidens, they are, um, think of a very small daisy-like flower. And then especially the Campfire Marshmallow reminds you of a daisy because it has pure white petals and then it has a yellow center. Such a sweet, sweet plant. Um, I put it in the urns last year. It was spectacular. This year, we're gonna put it directly into the landscape. We're gonna do the campfire marshmallow and then we're going to have the white knight um, alyssum around that because the, the alyssum for us does really well in the spring on um, those cooler wetter months but when the real heat hits and it dries up if i don't keep water on my white knight or any of my alyssums they don't do well so the white knight will be perfect for the wedding paired with the campfire marshmallow in the landscape so we're doing that also love Nemesia, especially the new one, the Aramance Mulberry. It was, it came out last year. It is already blooming in the retail greenhouse. It is a great cool weather plant. And Aramance Mulberry, hence its name, Aramance, has a, just a lovely fragrance to it. It has that beautiful mulberry color to it. Nice kind of a, a peachy red burgundy um, with a little bit of a yellow throat to it so much fun we're probably going to put the mulberry um, I'm, I'm looking at my violas in my urns and i'm going oh they just are struggling a little bit they'll come back once we get some more consistent warm weather but i'm really thinking about putting that aromance in the urns possibly for the wedding we'll see this is how i operate sometimes and you just kind of have to go with the flow but it also depends on the weather as far as like how will long will this mulberry last right because the nemesia tends to be a little bit more of a cool weather plant especially here for us in the south so we'll see how long it lasts just going to play it by ear but it would be stunning in a mass planting in the urns but for me it is a uh, early spring plant that i can't wait to use last year was the first year that i used artist blue ageratum I was so stinking impressed with this plant, y'all. I planted it in early spring. Remember I did it? I planted it um, at the base of the fountain right there um, off of the patio. 
I was thinking that this was going to be like a spring planting. No, no, no. Artist Blue Adjuratum went all through the entire summer into fall. I finally ripped it out of the ground in the late fall. This plant is an absolute workhorse in the garden. Uh, if I water soluble fertilized it, it would have been one time. I, of course, I used my time release fertilizer from Proven Winters when I plant them. It was a kind of a, a organically rich area. Um, not on irrigation it did get some splash from the fountain but that artist blue if you're looking for a nice pop of um it, and i wouldn't say it's a true blue it's more on the purple side but really nice tight habit it's what we call it buries it's dead so it will bloom when it's small and then it grows a little bit and then it hides the older blooms with the new blooms so you have this continuation of growing and fresh blooms love artist blue adjuratum this too will be used at the house in the gardens and then in the signature garden in that mixed bed. Blew my mind of ovulus. Blew my mind of ovulus that we're going with XL because we need extra large around here. Um, we'll always have a place in my garden. We are in North Carolina. We are in the South. It is, we're now in 8A. It is hot, it is humid, it can be quite miserable, especially in July and August. And those are the times of the year, and even into September for us, that you, you've got to be out of the garden by 10 a.m. because you just can't handle being in the sun. Blew My Mind XL Vobulus loves that kind of weather. It thrives in that kind of weather. It absolutely is like, bring on the heat, bring on the humidity. I love it. I am going to show you what an amazing plant I am. I'm going to plant this in mass along the walkway right in front of my David Austin roses. So they are going to be because um, the blue my mind is nice and short. It only gets to be about uh, like eight inches tall. So it is short, but it spreads out. You don't have to have it on irrigation. Um, you do not have to fertilize it. It hates to be fertilized. It has true blue flowers that your pollinators love. So we're going to have the Blue My Mind XL in front of the roses right there at the, um, the edge of the pathway. So I'm telling you, if you're in heat and humidity, then you need to have the Blue My Mind XL. It is great. Uh, it sells crazy in Florida. So if it can handle Florida weather, I know it can handle your weather as well. Now, talking about um, the switch gears just a little bit, foliage plants. Plants that give you beautiful color but are not going to flower. In your garden, you do not have to have just flowers to have a beautiful garden, right? We want foliage, we want texture, we want movement, and we want color. Color comes in lots of shapes and fashions. One of my favorite is the uh, Proven Accents, the Plum Dandy. Plum Dandy is going to be a really, really dark um, leaf to it. It is a smaller leaf. If you have um, done coleus in the past and you just feel like it gets too big and it's just too aggressive, try Plum Dandy. Plum Dandy is going to be a nice, moderate size. It is, I'm looking at my pictures here. It will be, um, let's see. I'm trying to get it for you people. Here we go. Phone's not working. Ha <laughs> ha. 10 to 16 inches tall. So 10 to 16 inches tall tends to have more of a nice mounded habit to it. It's not aggressive, but just a gorgeous dark color. Landscape, right, straight in the ground, or you can put it in containers. I am going to put it in the landscape in that mixed border. I know you're thinking like, Jimmy, how many plants are you having in the mixed border? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> We're gonna have lots of fun with that. Silver Falls is the most fun plant because it does these little, almost dime size, uh, size leaves on them, right? Beautiful, pure silver. It almost has an iridescent look to it. It almost has a silky texture to it. But Silver Falls gets its name because it's silver and it falls. If you are looking for a great trailing plant that it, you really want something to trail, you want it to spill, but you don't want a lot of action up on the top, then Silver Falls is going to be the plant for you. It's not going to get height to it hardly at all. But when you plant it um, on the edge of a container, whether it's a hanging basket, maybe it's right on the edge of a retaining wall, whatever the case may be, it is going to trail down and it gets really long. 
You can also put it in the landscape as a ground cover. So if you need something really nice and low, a temporary ground cover, then Silver Falls is definitely going to be um, one for you that you're going to love. It sells out crazy every single year. So lots of fun with that on the Silver Falls. Perhaps one of my favorite sweet potato vines is the Bewitch Green with Envy. Bewitch Green with Envy is that beautiful classic chartreuse color, right? So it's that solid chartreuse, has a nice kind of an, uh, a shape to it, not quite heart shape, not quite maple leaf. It's more closer to a heart shape, but it has like the serrated edges to it. I like Bewitch Green with Envy because it gets nice and mounded and it will not send out crazy runners. Now, yes, it does spread. And at the end of the season, if you need to trim it back, trim it back by all means. You cannot hurt sweet potato vine. However, it does tend to have a more controlled mounded habit. I personally like to use it in the landscape where I need big pops of that chartreuse color that works as a ground cover in, in that sense. So <clears throat> we're gonna be using Bewitched Green with Envy. Um, I, I'm thinking I'm using it in the berm because I have that beautiful color to it. Um, but that also is one of those where it's, I tend to garden where I'm like, there are certain plants I like, I know exactly where you're going. This is, I know a year in advance, this is where you're gonna go. And then other plants it's like, I love this plant. I have no clue where it's gonna go. We're gonna figure it out when we get there. This is kind of one of those plants y'all. All right, next, shade gardens. All right, I do have, Probably 98% of my gardens are full sun, but I do have uh, some shade gardens that I want to put annuals in. So this is what I am using. If you remember what I've talked about before, and then if you know me at all, you probably know that I love the um, Endless Illumination Broalia. Broalia is such a fun shade plant. It is a continuous bloomer. There's two colors. There's Endless Flirtation that's white, I tend to like the illumination a little bit better. It is in that purple blue family. They are beautiful, nice, big fat star shaped flowers. Nice mounted habit as far as the plant goes. It can handle some sun. Mine gets about maybe four to five hours of morning sun, but it's definitely in the shade in the afternoon in the heat of the day. It is gorgeous. Now it does respond well to being fertilized. When I say fertilized, if you can remember to fertilize it every three weeks, every four weeks, you're good to go. Is this a plant that needs to be fertilized every seven to 10 days? Absolutely not. But for my shade people, sometimes trying to find a continuous blooming annual is hard. Broalia is your answer. Another answer, the Rockapuco Double Impatience. I love them and I love all the colors. They come in a ton of colors. However, this year, I'm going to switch it up and I'm going to do purple. So I'm doing Rockapuco purple. Last year, I did Rockapuco coral reef. I've done apple blossom, I've done white, I've done wisteria. There's tons of different colors. I wanna do a little something different. Um, so we are gonna do the purple. The Rockapucos are a double impatient, truly sun. They do um, can handle again a couple hours in the morning but gotta have a break in the hottest part of the day. No direct sun, they will just, they will melt before your very eyes. Couple of things with your Rockapucos. I personally have found they do really well with consistent water. So whether you have it on irrigation or if it's just kind of a damp area, they do great. A great thing about them though is they do not like to be fertilized. I put my slow release fertilizer in the ground with them, but I do not come back and water soluble fertilize. If I do, it may be twice in a season, right? That is it. So very low uh, fertilizing needs on them, nice mounded habit, big, huge, fat flowers on them. I will say this, mine go in the landscape. If you put them in containers, I would consider your Rockapucos a messy plant in the fact of they are continually dropping those petals because they have such fat flower heads on them that they're gonna be continually shedding and dead, they're self-cleaning, so they just drop those. If that drives you crazy, because um, I have had them on my porch before and it drove me crazy. So I don't put them on my porch anymore. I put them in the landscape. Maybe you have a container in a flower bed. They would do great in the container. Just know that they can be considered a little bit more of a messy plant. Just an FYI. 
And then, of course, the last but not least for my shade is the Pink Chablis Lamian. Lamian we sell as a annual, but for me, it is technically a perennial. It is a great ground cover. I love Pink Chablis because it can do sun or shade. It is a gorgeous variegated uh, leaf to it. And then, as its name suggests, it does soft pink flowers. I use these in my shade garden as ground covers. So these will be more at the house. Um, my signature experience folks, you're gonna get to see this. I love this plant. So wherever I have those areas in my shade garden that are empty pockets, this is where I put these three plants. So my endless illumination, my Rockapucos and my pink Chablis, because um, I tend to, I don't say I'm a lazy gardener, I'm just, life is full and I don't have a ton of time to be out there weeding constantly. And the thing I have learned is the more plants you put in a garden, the more real estate you take up, the less empty space you have, the less room for weeds to grow. So I like to let my perennials come up. I see where my hostas are. I see where my stilbies are, my ferns, what have you. And then I come back and I find those empty spaces and I tuck these plants in there. That's the beautiful thing about a shade garden is it's very relaxed and informal and I can just fill in the pockets. So that is what I'm going to do with those three shade annuals. Talked about this before, the Plectranthus cerveza in lime. This is going to go in the signature garden in that mixed bed because the cerveza in lime is yet again does not flower. It is a green, um, beautiful foliage plant that will get some height to it. It will get to be about 14 to 18 inches tall. Nice kind of a mounded habit. But what is so fun and the reason I'm putting it in the signature garden is because when you rub it, it smells like a fresh lime. And I want the signature garden to be a uh, very, uh, all the senses, right? I want your eyes, I want you to hear, I want you to, to touch and to smell all of the things. Cerveza and lime is going to be really fun. Uh, I have to put a little sign that says, you know, scratch and sniff. So cerveza and lime, especially if you have kids, then this is a great one that they can, you know, really get excited about plants on that one. No garden would be complete without supertunias, especially not here at Creekside. We have to have loads of supertunias. I kind of broke them up into some different categories because we're going to have a great selection of um, petunias. Some I know exactly where they're going to go and some is going to be to be determined on uh, planting day. All right, here we go. The new supertunia hoopla vivid orchid. This is a great really fun um more and i would consider it like a bicolor because uh the alarm's going off um it has like a raspberry center and then on the edge is a thick white border we're going to plant the hoopla vivid orchid in mass around the fountain at the signature garden so that whole little flower bed that is enclosed right there at the fountain is going to be a mass planting of the hoopla vivid orchid. It is going to grab your attention. It is a main focal point when you go to the garden and you're going to see it and it is going to be spectacular. I'm going to use within the beds there at the signature garden, the Supertunia Bermuda Beach. Proven Winners improved it last year, so you're, when you buy your Bermuda Beach this year is going to be the improved version. Your tag's not going to look any different, but just know that is the improved version. These are massive flowers with this bright electric, um, I, I, it's, it's a pink, but it's not, it's a whole different kind of pink. It's almost like an iridescent color. Bermuda Beach, gorgeous. Of course, super tenuous, you can put them in the ground, you can put them in containers. And then I have to have the new Saffron Finch. Saffron Finch, I adore this plant. It will be new this year on the market. It is a true yellow flower that is just gorgeous. I paired it last year in the aquapots with the Bermuda Beach. Bermuda, <laughs> I can't even talk. Bermuda Beach, stunning. I also paired it with the pink cashmere, the Superbina. Love it. So you need to grab these. If you're interested in these new petunias, you need to go ahead and pre-order them now uh, because the, the, it's going to be a limited supply. Once they're gone, they're going to be gone um, at some point pretty soon and they're selling fast. The next one that I'm going to use is the Catalina Pink Terenia. I love Terenia because it is so extremely easy and it is versatile. 
So we're talking about where the pink Chablis Lamian will do sun or shade. So does the Terenia. Now, this is Catalina. Catalina pink will do sun or shade. There are some Terenias that are shade only. However, this Catalina pink is sun or shade. I like to use them more like ground covers. Um, where I am probably going to be using this the most is going to be there on the patio underneath my David Austin's and the blue chiffon Rose of Sharon standard. So that's going to be on that lower level. We'll have this Catalina pink and then coming up will be the mini Vista whites. So if you're looking for a great ground cover because it does get eight to 12 inches tall, but it, it will spread. It's not like an invasive spreader, huge flowers. Your pollinators love this, especially your bumblebees because the flowers on them are nice and fat and your bumblebees can get in there um, with their little tushies and get all of that uh, delicious nectar. Lantanas, we're gonna run through these lantanas right quick because I have got quite a few of them. Lantanas are great because they love the heat, they love the humidity, and they are absolutely thriving in that July, August, and September. We're going to use Luscious Royale Red Zone. The Red Zone is going to go in the berm where we are using the Suncredible Yellows. Then we're going to use the, um, this Red Lantana. It is going to be gorgeous. Now, I know I have red from the Holy Grail. They're going to be so separate from one another, we're not going to have a color clash. Then we are going to use the Luscious Royale Cosmo. Cosmo is a really fun bicolor color of some soft pinks, some soft yellows, um, and that is going to go in the backyard beds. So once the wedding is done and the heat really hits, we're going to pull out the alyssum and we're going to go ahead and plant this Royale Cosmo. Nice, beautiful pink and yellow, stunning colors on it. Luscious Citron. I love citron. So I'm doing citron and I'm doing lemon tart. Depending on which shade of yellow you want, whether you want a really like a what I call big bird yellow <laughs> of a yellow, or if you want more of a softer uh, a banana yellow, those are going to be your two options. So you can either do um, citron or you can do lemon tart. We're going to use those in various places around because of that gorgeous yellow color. I've already talked about um, how I adore before we, um, I've talked about this many times before, is Cleome. Cleome is a great, nice height. I like the proven winners Cleome because it is um, sterile, it doesn't smell, and it doesn't have thorns. So we're going to use the Senorita Rosalita. I'm going to use this in the cottage garden um, and anywhere I need some height that gives me a nice soft pink color. Great for attracting your butterflies. They love it. Your pollinators. Um, but the fact that it's sterile and thornless and it doesn't have an odor is what I absolutely love about it. When I'm looking to attract my uh, hummingbirds to my garden, I will always have vermilionaire. Vermilionaire is my number one plant to attract the hummingbirds in your garden. Really bright electric yellow, uh, yellow and but predominantly orange to it. Great tubular flowers really fun. So I put this in the cottage garden and anywhere that I really want to attract those hummingbirds. Some other ones that are absolutely great for attracting your hummingbirds and your pollinators are the salvias. So between the and that raised beds between the little lime punches and the sprinters there at the signature garden, we're going to do the unplugged pink salvia. Unplugged Pink is going to be a little bit smaller than the Rockin' Series. Um, it can be anywhere from like 14 to 30 inches tall. It probably will reach that 30 inches tall by the end of the season because we have such a long growing season. It will be on irrigation, but it's going to be that really nice, compact, sweet pink flower that's going to help me fill in the gap this year between those two shrubs. So between my row of sprinters, between my row of little lime punches, I need something to fill in there with a nice bright pop of color. Unplugged pink is the way that we're going to go. Then we also have all of the other salvias. The rockin' salvias are gonna go in the center of those four beds at the signature garden. So we're gonna have rockin' um, deep purple, rockin' fuchsia, rockin' blue suede shoes, and then rockin' uh, play in the blue. So all of those will be in the signature garden Great, great plants. Begonias, tons of begonias. The new Selenia yellow because I do adore that gorgeous 
bright yellow double flower. Um, we have surefire rose that's going to go a lot in the house gardens and then surefire white that too will be at the house. When I need have those areas that I do not want to fuss over because some plants are going to need a little bit more attention. My super tunias are going to need a little bit more attention than my begonias. I need plants that are no fuss. My begonias, my lantanas, my salvias, those are my no fuss plants, my coleuses that I'm going to use. Another no fuss is the Sunstar Rose Penta. Big, huge, fat flowers on it. Great for attracting your pollinators. This is gonna go in that mixed bed uh, over there at the Signature Garden. Uh, so we got the Angel Face Wedgewood Blue, Angel Face Pink, and then the Angel Face Super Blue. So all of those uh, Angelonas are gonna go in various areas. Gorgeous color, beautiful height, a different uh, texture because those flowers are on stalks that go up it is not spreading so that is going to be really fun uh, and then we have got grasses so I have got the purple fountain grass and then I have Prince Tut those will go the purple fountains are going to go both in the signature garden and then in the berm so we have got a ton of plants and I have a feeling that I didn't even get to all of them because um, I tell my people, it's like, I think they're multiplying right here in the very greenhouse and just absolutely growing. But I did want to share with you what we're going to be using in the gardens. And again, everything is subject to Jenny's whim and to change. There are certain things that I know exactly where they're going to go. Others, I'm like, we'll figure it out. Um, but what we're going to do is everything that we are planting for the gardens is going in grande size containers. It's just easier to plant. It is faster to plant. Even my grasses are going to go in those grandes because we do have the wedding at the end of May. And then we have the signature experience at the end of June. I need to get these babies in the ground um, as soon as I possibly can. That way they can really start growing and thriving here in the landscape and all of the gardens at the nursery. So the faster I can get them in the ground and out of containers, the happier the plants will be and the more established they will get uh, before the true heat of the summer hits. That is our plan and uh, of course we'll keep you updated and take you along for all the various gardening projects as we bring these babies out of the greenhouse and into the gardens at the appropriate time. So make sure, buy a sweatshirt, it's great. Also makes a great gift, you know? Um, so you have the sweatshirt and then of course you have the great plant special. You have to sign up for the email in order to know what that plant special is this weekend. As always, we hope you have found this fun, informative, and inspirational. Y'all have an amazing day. We've got a lot of plants to go plant. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.